Okay, so one of the most argumentative subjects that comes up I see on the Tesla forums and Tesla Facebook groups and whatnot is the subject of camber versus toe and which one exactly is wearing out my rear tires. All right, so first of all, we're talking about camber, which is the tilt inward of the, of the wheels, and then toe, which is tilting in from the front. So with camber, you can have the wheels riding. You know, you've seen some of those cars where they're just totally cambered in, they're just riding on the inner edge. Of course, that's not good for the tire, but you can go much longer with bad camber than you can with bad toe. If you've got bad toe, where your, your, your toe is either towed in or towed out, you can go through a set of tires in 200 miles and they will be completely bald. With camber, it doesn't really matter how bad the camber is. You're never gonna go through tires that quickly. But that being said, that doesn't mean that toe is what's generally responsible for your inner tire wear. Because with a Tesla, a couple things. First of all, it's way heavier than basically any other consumer car. And two, it's got you know the high torque. But furthermore, you've got adjustability with toe already. Not very much, but you have some adjustability with toe. And so a lot of guys have had their cars aligned where they get the toe in perfect spec and still they've got inner tire wear. It doesn't come in 200 miles, but maybe after 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 miles, now they've got really bad inner tire wear even though the toe is in good spec. But what's not adjustable from the factory on a Tesla, or many other cars for that matter, is a camber. Camber on a Tesla tends to be a little bit aggressive, although the range of being within spec is pretty wide on a Tesla. So you've got like, for example, on the Model X, I think it's minus 0.5 to minus 0.25, somewhere in that range in the rear. Now, you can be at minus 2.5 and have horrible inner tire wear, and be in spec or be at minus 0.5 and have no inner tire wear and still be within spec. Of course, most, most people would prefer to be on the more positive side of that scale so their tires last a significantly longer amount of time. And then some people, of course, will argue, yeah, but you lose handling. Y yeah, maybe to some minuscule degree you would. Um, certainly at minus 0.5, you, you would. but. I think for the average consumer driver, you're not going to really notice that. And that's actually one of the reasons why we've got the, uh, the multi-alignment uh, scale, is so you can alter between the two without having to have the car realigned. But anyway, so going back to the, the original point, um, is it camber or is it toe that's causing the problem? Could be both. Every car is gonna be a little bit different. I think the, the final point I would make is that even if you've got toe within you know, perfect spec, you know, slightly towed in at maybe 0.1 or 0.2 degrees, you can still have horrible, horrible inner tire wear if the camber is not right. And that's a big problem on Teslas. Um, you're gonna notice it, of course, more with the lower profile tires on the 21 or 22 inch wheels. It's a bigger problem I've seen on the Tesla Model S and X, but it definitely shows up on the 3 and Y as well. More, more on the Y than on the 3. So if you just purchased a Tesla new or used, um, if you purchase it used, the first thing you check on, on a Tesla is those rear tires. You know, if they've got several thousand miles on those tires, then you know, you want to check for inner tire wear. And if it is there, you know, maybe, maybe the seller's got a, uh, an alignment sheet you can look at and you can kind of compare it to the specs we have on our website. You know, one thing that you may want to check out, even if, even if you purchase a new Tesla, it's not a bad idea to just get it up on an alignment rack and see where the current alignment is at. Because we've seen a lot of Teslas come off the, off the factory floor and their, their alignment is bad straight, off the, straight out of the showroom. You know, some of that can be adjusted just uh, with whatever OEM controls are there right now but otherwise if it's if it's too bad you know if you if you're getting camber in, in the minus two range or even minus 1.5 range if you've got the bigger wheels and lower lower profile tires then you may want to consider getting arms right out of the uh, gate just so you don't lose your tires quickly and then you could have just <laughs> now you got to buy a new set of tires which is you know a thousand bucks these days you know you could have spent that on on uh, getting some control arms so you don't have the problem <laughs> basically <laughs> 
One thing I will say is, um, I, I know one of the things like when you're when you're buying something like this, you're like, well, yeah, I don't want to spend you know that much money on on these parts. But really, one of the cool things about these parts is that they will pay for themselves because you'll be able to maximize your tread life, you know, in a big way, um, depending on how bad your wear is. You know, if you're getting five to seven thousand miles out of a set of tires, you know, you could easily be getting, you know, thirty to forty thousand miles out of those same tires if you've got your alignment right. And in some ways, it's not really rocket science. You know, if you've got your alignment set right, the tires are going to wear evenly, and you're going to get the most life out of your tires. Um, so that's what our products excel at, and is making sure that you you get uh, you get the right alignment. You get even tire wear. And another thing that's cool, which I didn't mention, which I think is really an important point. When your alignment is set really well with our parts, then you can get much better range out of your battery than you can if your alignment is not set, because you, you lose a lot of that resistance. And that, that, that is especially true with alignment kit one, which will bring the car a little bit lower, making it a little bit more aerodynamic. And uh, I've had a couple of customers reach out to me who tend to monitor that thing on their, uh, on their cars and say, you know, like, I'm getting like 20% better range than I did previously. Now, I'm not going to say that that that's a um, that amount of range is a common increase that you're going to expect, but you definitely can expect some increase in range for sure. Oh yeah, this hat, uh, you, can, you can get it from our website or the E3 Tuning website. We didn't sacrifice anything on the hats either. Everything we sell, like I don't want anything leaving here unless it's a, a quality product. So that's what you can expect from the hats. That's what you can expect from stickers. <laughs> everything we offer.